In this video, we're going to learn how to use the GitHub template to turn your design into the ASIC files we need to make the chip. So the first thing you need to do is come to this repository and then you need to fork it. And to, make, to be able to fork, you're going to need to be logged into GitHub. And so if you don't have a GitHub username already, you'll have to register. So I'm going to rename this M segments, create the fork. And what that does is it copies a version of this repository into my own space. After you've forked your repository, you're going to need to do these two important things here, enabling the GitHub actions and enabling the GitHub pages. So you can read how to do it here, or I can show you now. So we go to actions, enable actions, and then we go to settings, pages, and then set this to be GitHub actions. And then the important thing here is the info.yaml file. And if I'm doing a Wokwe design, I need to change this number from zero to the Wokwe ID. And if I'm using an HDL like Verilog or Amaranth, then I need to use this section here. And we have a video about uh, using HDLs. So I'm going to edit this. I've got my Wokwe design here. So I'm going to copy this, paste it in here. And then we also need to fill out this documentation. So I'm going to do this now. At the bottom here, we've got optional fields. And if you want to use a picture, then you can just add the picture to your GitHub repository and then put the relative path to the picture here. Then we need to commit the changes. After you make the commits, the two actions will start running. There's one for the GDS and there's one for the docs. And then in about five minutes, you'll have both jobs done. So the GDS job is showing the output of those ASIC files. And we have this nice page here with some warnings, utilization statistics, usage, cell usage. We've got the 3D viewer. Right click to pan, zoom. We can turn off these layers manually. We've also got these shortcut keys here so we can hide the fillers. And we can see actually our design is extremely simple. We can click on a cell to see what it is. We can press what, um, three and that will isolate a cell. This is a very strong buffer driver. So a weak signal comes out and a very strong signal, a weak signal comes in and a very strong signal comes out. And then we get our screenshot here, our PNG. So it's really cool if you tweet this stuff out or put it on your social media with the hashtag tiny tape out tag. That really helps the project and it's really cool for me to see people using it. We also have this uh, docs and both of the docs and the GDS actions have to be passing for you to submit your design. And the reason that we want the docs is so that we can make a cool data sheet like this that everyone can have a copy of to see how people's designs work because you'll have a copy of everyone else's design on your chip. It produces an artifact. So this is like a PDF preview of just your one design here. So if you've got any pictures or you're playing around with Markdown, which you can put, you can use, then you can see a preview here. So then back on the front page of your repository, you'll have these two green lights passing and you need them both to be green to make a submission. So now that we've got both those green lights on, we're ready to submit. So you can come to the tinytapeout.com website and then on the front page, scroll down to submit your design. And here we're going to paste in the repository name. So I'll just copy that, paste that in. And that's going to check that both those green lights are on, that you've got good docs and that you, the GDS is good. And then you can choose either one of these packages. So either you're going to get your design on an ASIC mounted on a physical PCB for $100, or 
or uh, the design only, uh, so no physical product for $25. And then you just continue to payment here. So that's it, happy hacking, and I look forward to seeing what you make on your ASIC.